Hey, hello everyone. I'm Todd Nock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So it's been a long, oh, too long of a time since my last art broadcast. I've been crazy busy. Been working on some different comic projects. Um, hopefully you saw my Stargirl Spring Break special come out. Woo. Uh, here not too long ago, uh, just about the past month. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm working on an X-Men Legends story, which comes out July and August of the year, this year. Uh, so just like in about a month, uh, X-Men Legends issues five and six, and then hopefully you've seen a bunch of my uh, variant covers that I've been doing, like the War of the Bounty Hunters connected covers, my headshot covers, things like that. So, um, so a lot of work that's been keeping me super crazy busy. In fact, I, uh, amongst all that, I, I rearranged my office, so now I'm shooting from the other side of the office. So, um, you know what? Enough jibba jabba. Let's flip the camera around. Let's start drawing. So good to uh, reconnect with y'all. Hope y'all have been doing well. You love my Sinister War cover. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I've got a Sinister War retail variant and a Sinister War headshot variant for the first issue there. Both of those are for the first issue. So uh, two different covers for Sinister War number one. Let me just readjust the rig here. Sorry about that, gang. And focus. There we go. So let's see, I'm trying to figure out what to draw today, who to draw today. Um, let's see, got it. Sorry for the delay here, gang. This is all kind of last minute. Thought I got a little free time here. Let's let's get together and draw. And I just lost my pencil sharpener. Just getting my graphite pencil sharpened there, my, my Statler Mars HB pencil. So one that I like to use as well as you've seen me use my Unikura Toga mechanical pencil. Um, sometimes I like to use a, a wooden pencil here for a different, um, different sized kind of lead here for more broad strokes. So, um, you know, I've kind of been wanting to draw a Masters of the Universe character. So I'm thinking maybe... Well, nice thing about Masters of the Universe characters, they're all kind of... Most of them, I'd say 90... 90... Let's say 98%. Don't hold me to these numbers. Uh, percent of them are pretty much the same size. They've got the same build, you know, because they're... An action figure line. So unless you're a Ram Man or Orco or Orco or or Modulock, you're gonna have pretty much a very similar build. So I can just kind of start roughing in some shapes here and see who I end up with. I'll do my best to respond to any questions or comments while I draw as best I can. Can't promise I can respond to every single one of them, but I'll try to keep an eye out here and try to respond to any if I'm able to. Just getting all the the shapes roughed out here. Just kind of making this up as I go along. Sorry about that. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome to the live stream. Okay, you know what? Not liking this. Ah, uh, you read my story in the, in the multiverse, the DC multiverse Christmas special, right on, my Booster Gold story. That was a lot of fun to do, especially as a big Booster Gold fan, finally got to draw a Booster Gold series, or story, I should say, not a series. I'd love to work on a Booster Gold series uh, story for the, uh, 
the holiday special that came out last last December from DC Comics. So I didn't quite like how that was going. So I figured cut my losses now. Let's try let's try again. Let's turn it sideways here. I think I have something in mind. Gotta keep roughing in the shapes here. Love seeing how even professionals erase and start over. Yes, yes, every er professional erases and starts over. And I'll let you in on the big secret as to why uh, professionals do that. Um, we're all humans. We're all human beings. We all, you know, make mistakes. That's why erasers exist. And nothing wrong with that. It's all, it's one of our many tools. I mean, if I were to show you all my tools here, you're going to see that at least one, two, three, four of them are erasers. Uh, five. Five erasers. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, erasing, not, not unheard of. In fact, we're going to erase again. Don't like how this is coming together. See, I use a... Uh, Click erasers, block erasers, and right here I'm using this uh, kneaded art gum eraser. Nice thing about this, no shavings, no, no those little shavings. Hope everyone's having a good weekend. Father's Day weekend. See, let's turn the board back here and um, let me try w yet again here, see if I can find my vibe. Already. Didn't like where that placement was. Who am I drawing? Right now I'm trying to draw a Masters of the Universe character. Still trying to decide on which one. Kind of vacillating between two of them right, right now in my head. Well, the thing is throwing me off is this new rig. Don't like how it is set up. I'm going to have to fix that for next time. Thanks for all the kind words and welcomes, gang. If you missed uh, the very intro to the show, I was mentioning how busy I am with my comic book work. It's been a crazy busy year. The pandemic had things really slowed down for me for about six, seven, eight months. And that's why I was doing all those COVID-19 post-it note streams, those stay at home post-it videos. And uh, then, then work started to pick up a little bit. And then by November of last year, it started to really pick up and then 
just prior to the start of 2021, I had already gotten so many projects on my plate that uh, I was gonna be, knew I was gonna be busy for all of all of uh, 2021, and it has not slowed down. Really, it's slowed down a little bit here. I'm kind of in between projects here at the moment, which allowed me time to come and uh, hang out with y'all today. So, uh, yeah, I wish I could uh, live stream a little more regularly like I had last year. But, um, you know, sometimes when it just life gets that busy, you just kind of have to roll with the punches. Thoughts on the new Invincible TV show? Oh, it's it's amazing. It's uh, so cool to see that comic book come to life in animation. So yeah, I've watched, that's one of the few TV series I've been able to keep up with. So uh, really, really enjoyed that. Will I be at New York Comic Con this year? No, I will not be at any comic book conventions for 2021, unfortunately, uh, mostly due to my work schedule. So, um, I regret not being able to be at New York Comic Con. Um, it is definitely one of my favorite conventions of the year. Of, but uh, but the pandemic kind of really has thrown things off for me. So um, hopefully I'll be back to normal convention-wise um, for 20, uh, 2022. So really, really, I'm disappointed I can't be at New York Comic Con. Um, this year. But I hope it's a fun one. I hope you all have a good time. All right, so I think I've got kind of a, a, a baseline of, of a figure here down. So now I know <laughs> what I'm going to do here is a race. Thoughts on the new He-Man show coming to Netflix? Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Very excited. Finally got caught up on my Transformers. Now I'm just doing a light erasing here. I'm not erasing it totally. I'm just kind of doing a light erasing so I can see my details as I build on top of my, my structure here. So I gotta find my reference for the specific character I want to draw. a unique character. I'm pretty sure this character will be on the uh, on the show, on the new Masters of the Universe Revelations. And uh, and that guy is Clamp Champ. So I've switched here now to my Unikura Toga, 0.5 HB lead, or no, 0 0.3, I'm so sorry, 0 0.3 HB lead mechanical pencil. We'll just see how much drawing we can get in here today. Probably just be pencil art for the most part. So I kind of structure out this face a little bit more, kind of really break down where the shapes are going to go. The eyes, nose, mouth. Ears.
switching back here to my Statler Mars pencil, mainly because my uh, other pencil was giving me the, the lead was not clicking out and uh, it's a little frustrating. Didn't have time to, uh, don't want to take the time to do mechanical pencil maintenance. Things are about to get messy again. Challenge here with Clamp Champ is his clamp. Um, Got to figure out how to draw this bulky thing kind of in a three three dimensional three dimensional sort of a look here. Looking at toy reference here in a Google search. I think they just made a, I think they've, it's probably released in stores now, the Retro Play Clamp Champ. in here and try tightening up the eyes. Ah, oh, there goes the mechanical pencil. It's working now. I think what I'll do is try to just really just drop in some really rough pencils here and then just jump right to inks. That's the plan. <laughs> we'll see if it comes to uh, fruition here. So this is just kind of hanging out and drawing sort of time today. Had a hard time. Um, well, uh, I would say, you know, look at real life eyes, look at real life eyeballs um, is going to be uh, a help. Um, look at the emotions of eyes, like eyes change shape depending on the emotion being conveyed, whether you're happy, sad, angry, surprised, scared, worried. So really study the emotion of the eye and what is the emotion you want to convey in your in your eye uh, you know the character you're drawing the person you're drawing um, 
and look at the eyes and eyelids and how they how they take shape, the crinkles around the eyes, and um, and doesn't just really kind of just practice that. Just kind of when I was uh, it was in fourth grade, I took an after school drawing class. My mom had enrolled me in. It was it was fun. Definitely learned some stuff there. And I remember our teacher had us doing just drawing eyes. We had to like fill up a page in our sketchbook just of eyeballs, like eyes and eyelids, not like eyeballs plucked out of a of an eye. I mean, I guess we could have just drawn. No, she wanted us to draw the eyelids and stuff. We so um, you know we just had to kind of just the practice, the the continued practice of. Um, drawing the eyeball shape and the eyelid shape. So it's, um, so it's that just kind of continued practice to where it becomes almost second nature. In many ways, maybe it does become second nature. Right. Hopefully, I'm not going to regret not having tight pencil details for the champ here. Focus in, focus. I have to work on better lighting for the next live stream. So let's just jump right into inks and see what comes about. This is just going to be kind of quick sketch Saturday here. Um, using the zero one. Pigma Micron pen here, right now, to start the inks. Let's see, you know I'm a fan of watercolors. Have I tried gouache paints? I have not worked with gouache since my art school days. And that was a lot, a lot of years ago. So uh, maybe at some point I will revisit gouache when I have some free time. And, uh, and experiment with that. Kind of rediscover it, I guess, is what it'd be. Did those Gwen Stacy comics ever come out? Uh, issues one and two came out, uh, which was before the pandemic shut everything down. Uh, now the the issues three, four, and five are on pause, and uh, maybe someday Marvel will unpause Gwen Stacy so that that series can be finished and. Uh, gotten out to y'all. So, um, I've moved on to other projects for the time being, for sure, because, you know, gotta, gotta, gotta stay, stay working, so, uh, um, but, uh, I really have enjoyed working on the, uh, Gwen Stacy series, and certainly hope we can get all five issues out to everyone. So three more issues to, to go um, to be released. And maybe that will happen someday. That's all Marvel's call. I unfortunately have no sway in that decision. But I do appreciate everyone who read the first two issues. Where have I been? I've been busy working, doing lots of comic book projects this year. Uh, Stargirl Spring Break Special at DC Comics. Hopefully y'all had a chance to go pick that up and read it. It's a lot of fun. 
kind of felt like uh, my return to the that kind of Young Justice vibe. And for those of you watching, if you aren't aware, I used to draw the original Young Justice comic at DC Comics. Pretty much drew that entire series. So, uh, definitely one of my most well-known credits. Who are some of my favorite artists in the industry right now? Oh my gosh, it's pretty much, look at who I follow on Instagram and you'll see. Uh, I would say Carlos Gomez. I really love Carlos Gomez's work. Uh, Marcio Takara is amazing. Um, Ryan Otley is been a long time fave from uh, his Invincible days, and now he's over there at Marvel. I think he's about to, uh, let's see, I think he just wrapped up his run on Spider-Man and is doing a new project for Marvel, so I look forward to that. Ed McGinnis, my friend Ed McGinnis, always love his work. Those are just some off the top of my head. Max Dunbar does really cool stuff. Rian Gonzalez, she does really cute covers. Am I friends with J. Scott Campbell? Uh, yes, yes I am. I mean, we're not like best buds, go go hang out and, you know, meet up for lunch because, well, mainly because we live in different states. But, uh, you know, but when I see them at a convention, when we see each other at a convention, it's always friendly and cordial. So I consider that a professional friendship, kind of colleague in that sense. Well, I give J. Scott Campbell a big kiss on the cheek for you. Uh, no, no. Um, I will let you deliver your own kisses to J. Scott Campbell. I think that's only fair. So let's try pushing in here a little bit closer. We'll just, I'll just have to remember to move the uh, camera around, but just so you can see the detail of the face as I ink. Make sure we're still uh, in focus. I'm going to switch over to the double zero five for some tinier details. I'll see how oh, you participated in my art challenge right on. Now, for those of you who are watching and if you have an Instagram account, hopefully you're following me on Instagram. If you are not, please come follow me on Instagram. I this year I at the beginning of each month, usually within the first week, I try to get it up as close to the beginning of each month as possible. I do a, a monthly art challenge. It's called Storytelling Snapshots. And uh, I give you a prompt of a scene and your challenge is to draw that prompt in one, 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 one panel, one, one illustration. People are of course welcome to do a full comic book page if they want, many do. But the main challenge is can you capture all that information in one panel, um, but it's not restrictive to that. So uh, uh, it, let's see, we've had, we did a Spider-Man prompt to start with, and since then I think I've had a, gosh, I can't remember all the prompts now. I know there was a Ninja Turtle one, a Gwen Stacy one that we just finished. Uh, we're currently in a Deadpool one. Uh, oh, there was a Superman one. So let's see, we're on prompt number six. I can't remember how I listed. Let's see, there was Leonardo, Spider-Man, Gwen Stacy, Superman, Deadpool. Who am I missing? I'm forgetting one. Oh, Wolverine. Wolverine was the second one. 
So, uh, so, so there's still time. There's a deadline. There's a deadline, and um, there's a, there's a chance I might share your your illustration, your entry in my Instagram stories. Uh, I can't promise I can share everyone's, but uh, so far I've shared 99.5% of the entries. So, uh, so there's a pretty good chance that I will share your entry in my Instagram story. Though I have to preface it, there is no guarantee that I will. Um, so, but there's a really good chance. And uh, the exercise is to hopefully help those of you who want to be comic book artists to get to thinking how to structure your, your panel. And for some people who are making it a full page of comic book panels, they're telling a whole sequenced story, which is totally legit. Uh, some people are making it a multi-page thing. They're taking my prompt and they're fleshing it out to a, a multi-page uh, story snapshot. Which is which is cool because these people now have items for their portfolio, and with conventions starting up again, you want to have your portfolios ready to show editors because that's a good way to uh, make connections and uh, break into the biz. Any thoughts on drawing Spider-Man 29 in the near future? Have I ever drawn him before? Um, I've drawn him for like uh, some covers, but uh, like my Where's, I don't think he was in Where's Hydra, but my Where's Wolverine cover, I know the white uh, suit 29, Spider-Man 2099 was on that cover. I can't remember if I drew him on my Spider-Verse cover. It's hard to remember. I've been doing so much work, it's all blurring as to, along with commissions, it's hard to remember which illustrations have I done are for commissions and which ones are, which characters have I drawn for covers or for professional work. Now I switched to the double zero three to get the detail of the irises here. It's the finest point micron they make. They now make a double zero three, which is super, super fine really helps when you got to get those teensy tiny tiny they just make up a new word teensy tiny um, details all right so that's fine I having fun with that face showing how it's coming together I want to flesh out his hair here. So I want to switch over to a, um, how to, uh, what's the most stressful comic I've had to work on? Huh. Interesting. Uh, depends on the context. So I'm using a zebra brush pen, the medium here, so I can get the, the texture of his hair going. Uh, so there have been some projects that have been like uh, under the uh, tight deadline that editors have asked me to help come in and work on. And that that can be stressful because you know there's the clock is ticking and you're being brought in as, you know, a relief pitcher. So, uh, so there's a lot of, that, that can be pretty stressful. Because, um, you know, I'm not going to get the full four to five weeks to draw that comic. Um, it's going to be a truncated time frame, so the focus really ramps up, and uh, that that can be stressful. All right, so let's uh, now that we've got a, the head drawn here, head and face, we can move to other parts, and I need to find my reference again. So I got to figure out how to draw this. Uh, right now I think I have to move towards the clamp because it's in the foreground. So if I get the clamp done, then I can fill him in behind it. So it's better for me to move to the clamp, which um, I, 
think I'm already beginning to <laughs> uh, be beginning to dread uh, because it's just such a weird shape. I want to try to get as close to accurate as possible. In fact, I'm studying it now here in my my reference Google reference I've pulled up here just so I can. Uh, get somewhat close. Uh, we'll take some creative liberties. I'm sure there'll be some liberties here. So I'm just tightening up some of the uh, some of the uh, details. That's the word I'm looking for. Details of the clamp. And you got this big bulky chunk back here. So what was that last question I saw? Uh, have I ever met the artist Domo, Domo Stanchion or Jim Lee before. Have not met Domo Stanchion. Actually, this is the first time hearing of the name Domo Stanchion. I'll have to look this artist up, see what their work looks like. But Jim Lee, yes, I met Jim Lee a long time ago. And uh, yes, definitely ha have met and spoken with Jim Lee. He was very very cool and, and gracious to chat with me the times we've met and chatted like either at a comic book convention or whatnot. Green Goblin or Hobgoblin, who has the better design? Um, I don't, I don't, I personally don't really know if I see it that way. They're both excellent designs. They're both classic characters. I don't see one as being better than the other. Um, that's just me. Um, if you have, if you think one is better than the other, totally cool. Me, I don't even really think of it in those terms. Um, I just think they're both cool. And really, Hobgoblin only exists because Green Goblin exists. Because um, Green Goblin was, what, 15, 10, 15 years before Hobgoblin came on the scene. So Hobgoblin uh, in a sense, derives from Green Goblin. So just using my uh, straight edge here to start to um, building this uh, clamp tech. What book have I... Uh, never worked on, but always wanted to. Uh, a Booster Gold related book. Booster Gold, Blue Beetle sort of thing. Domo Stanton. Okay. Thanks for catching me up there. Domo Stanton. Have I tried the point zero 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 one pen? Uh, no, because I'm not drawing things on a microscopic scale. Um, so it hasn't been necessary. Plus, they're crazy expensive because of the technology it takes to make a pen that small, a pen tip that small. I think they're, uh, it's almost cost the same amount as Space Tech. So, no, haven't tried that one yet. I've only heard rumor of their existence. How have I been? I've been busy. I have been busy. Busy working. Working on comic books. Comic book projects keeping me super psycho busy for 2021. My next comic coming out is X-Men Legends number 5 and 6. This um, uh, July and August. What character am I drawing? I'm drawing Clamp Champ from Mystery, <laughs> from Mystery, from Masters of the Universe. Almost said Mystery Science Theater 3000. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of that of late. One of my favorite shows, for sure. 
Have I tried the 10,000 point pen? Uh, no, because I haven't had to draw on the side of a building. So that, that, that tool has not been necessary for me to own. And again, it's pretty expensive. It's usually what, usually in the thousands of dollars for a pen that size. And the crane that you have to own to actually use it. Let's see, do I have a specific diet to keep uh, from the brain fog working long hours? Um, I, try to, I, tr I try to eat healthy. Uh, COVID-19 really helped with uh, me eating off diet. So, uh, so I kind of paid the price, packed on a few pounds here that I need to uh, shed. Um, a good chunk of that was in my hair. Uh, finally got a haircut and lost about five pounds in just hair alone. I say jokingly. Um, so diet wise, um, you know, I try to eat a, you know, I start with oatmeal for breakfast, oatmeal and raisin with raisins. I um, do a lunch, you know, a small lunch of usually like half of a PBJ sandwich. Um, uh, carrots, apples, Maybe a little bit of hummus um, and then for a snack usually uh, dried fruit and almonds uh, or another apple or both depending on how hungry I get and um, and then you know a sensible dinner or in and out burger whichever whichever way my wife and I decide to uh, go for dinner. In and out is our treat dinner. Have I ever considered going to making small animations? You know, that has intrigued me. I just have not had the time to look into learning how to uh, make such a thing. I think Procreate, you can make small animations. So I need to look more into that, study it. But we see any wild guard related material coming soon. Please, please, for the love of mercy, please. <laughs> oh, you're breaking my heart. I, 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 um, I want to. Uh, I just haven't had the time to. So, uh, but maybe someday I'll get more wild guard out there to everyone. Um, kind of been working on a short story in my free time, which has been non existent here uh, the past. Uh, well, since last October, so um, I'm about halfway done penciling, inking, and coloring a a new Wild Guard short story. But I've been working on that short story for about five years now. <laughs> so uh, um, who knows when I'll I'll get it finished. And there's also some other creator-owned stuff I want to try. So uh, so we'll see we'll see what the future holds. But I do appreciate those who have read my creator-owned series, Wild Guard. Thank you so much. Appreciate that support and uh, enjoyment of my creator-owned uh, characters. Hopefully y'all have had a chance to read my jack o Lantern comic strip. I've got more of those that I've completed. I just need to have, just need to give, it, give them the final editing touches, make sure all the spelling is correct and stuff like that. Uh, but you can read my jack o Lantern on uh, Instagram or on, um, what's it called? Uh, Twitter. He has his own accounts. And that's where I post his adventures. I think I have eight of them up currently. Just a little something different for me to do. Something that's not really traditional superhero stuff.
What would be the subject Deadpool has to get in the uh, Deadpool art challenge? <laughs> That's the thing. Um, I leave one part of the prompt open for participant... Um, for the participants to decide on their own. So what is the object? You as the storyteller get to decide that. You get to decide what is the character or who is the character that is trying to stop Deadpool and you get to decide what is the object that Deadpool is having to acquire. So that's where you as a storyteller get to have uh, some control and your own creative uh, storytelling to, uh, to run with. So, so that's, all, that's all on you. Go for it. Whatever you want to draw. Imagine, think, think through the scene. Imagine what it would be. You know, let it play out in your head. And then, uh, and then let, just let it, let it take shape. See, that makes the, 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 the art challenge, uh, for me, I think fun because it allows each, each artist to create their own, um, their own story. So everyone's story is going to be a little bit different. Deadpool has to get my mane of hair. <laughs> He's gonna have to find it in the trash because uh, I got my hair cut like three weeks ago and I'm sure that hair is long, long gone. Once I got fully vaccinated and it was safe for me to go get a haircut, I took full advantage of it. The long hair was interesting. It was an interesting experiment, but not my, not my cup of tea. I might grow my hair out long again someday, but uh, not looking to do that anytime soon. So now we're working on the clamp part. How big was my afro in the 70s? I was a small child in the 70s. I was a, a wee little lad in the 1970s. By the time my hair started growing out to any sort of length, it was the 1980s. So you should be asking, how long was my mullet? And I think the pandemic showed you just what my hair can do. I haven't reached the Alan Moore le level yet. No, I could not. I don't think I would. Ha that would probably take a decade to get to the, the Alan Moore level of hair length. And that was not a, a journey I was looking to take. Have I enjoyed the Superman Lois TV show? I have not seen it, but I've heard great things about it. Would I rather be a head without a body? <coughs> Excuse me. Or a body without a head? Um, <laughs> Uh, um, did I, you know, I, I think biologically, if you're one or the other, you're probably not alive. Because uh, a lot of my vital organs that my head needs are inside my body. And then, like, the other organs that my body needs are inside my head. So, um... Yeah, I, I just I, I just don't think that's going to be a win-win situation. But if I had to choose, I'd probably say head without a body because, um, you know, at least then I could uh, still watch TV and listen to music and read and stuff. So uh, and think and and hopefully communicate to some degree. And then maybe we could get me a new body. Maybe we could clone me a new body. Because if there's enough science to keep my head alive without a body, then there's bound to be science on the way that would allow me a new body. Or I could get a robot body. You know, that, that I'm sure that would be an option. So... It's like a cyborg. 
instead of Modoc, I would be Todd Doc. Yes, yes. But instead of only for killing, it would be only for cracking jokes, cracking with a K, because I don't want to kill anybody. I don't want anybody to die, because... Is my hair longer than my wife's yet? No, my hair is cut off. I got my hair cut a few weeks ago. Uh, you can go back and watch the beginning of this live stream and you can see after we're done here and you can see uh, what, what, what I got going on. So yeah, I got a haircut about at the beginning of June uh, after I was fully vaccinated. And uh, so I'm, I'm back to normal. Oops, sorry, gang. Using my French curve here for a nice clean curved line. Other, other side of the clamp done. I've almost done with his whole clamp apparatus for the most part, it seems like. Almost looks like a tank. Yeah, it does look a little bit like a tank. It is a big bulky chunk of machinery he carries around apparently. Am I reading X-Men? Yes, I'm trying to keep up with my X-Men reading. I think I'm a few months behind on all the titles. My crazy work schedule does not allow me to read as much as I'd like. How do I make my ink lines so darn perfect every time you try they come out scratchy mistakes? Uh, well, Part of it is continued practice. I think my lines were probably pretty scratchy when I first started off uh, inking years and years and years and years ago. And I learned to um, learned how to kind of get them cleaner. And what, a part of that comes with uh, confidence. Confidence in putting my lines down on the page. And that confidence comes from my experience, from practice. So keep practicing. In fact, I have an inking, uh, an inking exercise video here on my channel. Um, not, I think if you look in my inking folder, I have an inking playlist, I should say, not folder, but inking playlist. Check out the inking playlist is what I'm saying. You can find that inking uh, exercise uh, video. And you can uh, see if some of those those uh, techniques, practice techniques, can help um, help you with uh, becoming more confident in your lines. It's just beefing up these uh, contours. Is this for work or for fun? This is for fun. I don't really ever do any of my work here on. Uh, on the inst on the the YouTube's or my Instagram uh, live streams, 
uh, mainly because that's, uh, you know, stuff I have to keep keep secret. The work stuff can't be can't be letting cats out of bags before the publisher. So uh, so anything you see me drawing here is most likely, I'd say, ninety nine percent of the time for fun. Even though my work stuff is fun too. This is like strictly for fun. All right, so I pretty much got that clamp ink, uh, inked. Let me uh, just double check my reference here. I think there was uh, some one spot of um, what's it called uh, detail. I need to. Need to verify. Yep, yep. They have some uh, little panels back here. Some tech. Just like that. All right, now we gotta start working on his armor here and the rest of his body. See that, and then I wanna work on other parts of his clamp. I'm sure I'll discover parts that are, that need a little tweaking here and there. Hello from Japan, hello. Where are people watching from? I know we got Japan in the house. Welcome Japan. Where are the people watching from? Should we have shoes for our hands? Yes, they're called, um, well, no, I guess glo gloves are socks for the hands, so uh, sure. Let's see, Ohio, Sweden, Brazil, welcome. New Orleans or Nowlands, Florida. Okay, gang, um, seeing that we're, uh, I'm having a little trouble with the uh, connection here, it might be because my wife is on her weekly Zoom call with her family. So um, we might have to pause this illustration if we get too many, um, too many uh, timeouts here with the internet connection. If I see it, it uh, lags too much, I will have to... Uh, wrap up and um, reconvene inking for another video, but we will not pull that trigger just yet. Now, this is my very first time drawing Clamp Champ, if I didn't say that before. I haven't drawn a lot of Masters of the Universe characters, though I do enjoy them. Um, but this is the very, very, very first time for me to try drawing Clamp Champ. Have y'all watched the, the Netflix documentary series, The Toys That Made Us? It's one of my favorites. I, I love I love that show, and uh, and I find the um, the stories of how these toy properties came came to be, uh, especially the uh, the of the toy lines that I, of course I grew up loving and, and still love to this day. Transformers, GI Joe. The Transformer GI Joe connection is very unique. It's very amazing. I did not realize how how closely those two toy lines actually were. And uh, if you're wondering what I mean, if you have Netflix, go watch the G.I. Joe episode first and then the Transformer episode second. Uh, really, 
really interesting story. They're about 45 minute stories. Did I watch the original He-Man cartoon or the early 2000s one? I watch, well, I didn't really get to watch either cartoon. Uh, growing up in the 80s, uh, where I lived at in East Texas at that time, we did not get the one Dallas station that showed the He-Man cartoon. I got the Dallas station that showed uh, the uh, Transformers and G.I. Joe and Mask and Bionic 6, thankfully, because I love all, all of those cartoons. Uh, but the, 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 the channel that showed uh, Masters of the Universe, Voltron, uh, Robotech, I didn't get those channels. So I, couldn't, I didn't get to watch those cartoons. Uh, as a kid. Um, I might get to see a random episode if I went to visit family in Dallas who had the channel. Um, and I would, of course, just eat it up. I remember at the time I got to watch Voltron. I just just savored the, that half hour and then just started drawing Voltron, Voltron type robots for the rest of the visit. Um, and wished I wished I had that channel. Um, so, and then when the 2000s one came out, um, I just gotten married and my wife and I decided to not pay for cable because, you know, we're young newlyweds, we need to save money. And so we ditched cable back in, in the year 2000 and I have not had cable since. And thankfully streaming allows for me to um, watch all the things that, or many of the things I didn't get to watch. Um, so I've gotten to watch some of the original 80s um, uh, Master of the, of the Universe though uh, some of the storylines aren't really as appealing to me as, as an adult. Um, I do enjoy parts of it for nostalgia um, of, of the time, of the thing I didn't get to see, but it's not one that's like compels me. It's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta watch, you know, another episode of 80s He-Man. Uh, Thundercats was another cartoon I didn't get to watch um, either, uh, though I have started watching some of those episodes. Uh, but the 2000s one, I thought looked cool. 2000s uh, Masters of the Universe, I thought looked super cool, but just didn't get have an opportunity to watch and do not really, I have not seen it being available on any of the streaming services, but I haven't looked that hard. Were all the new men my designs? No, no, they were not. Uh, that book was originally started by um, uh, the artist Jeff Matsuda, uh, amazing artist, great guy. And so I took over with issue seven. So Jeff Matsuda had already started, had already done the initial designs for many of those characters. Um, I got to do some redesigns when I came onto the book, but um, I, uh, I got to um, and create new characters, I should say, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, I got to do a bulk of that series, um, but no, I, I did not create the original, the initial designs for many of those characters. Someone asked about Ninja Turtles. Yes, I did get to watch the Ninja Turtles cartoon in the 80s because it was a CBS Saturday morning cartoon and I got the CBS station. Um, so I was able to watch that one because of Saturday mornings. But a lot of the car toy cartoons uh, like G.I. Joe, Transformers, Thundercats, Masters of the Universe, Silverhawks, um, things like that, those were uh, syndicated cartoons and they would air on weekday afternoons, um, like after school, they were like after school cartoons, Mask being another one of those. So those were not Saturday morning cartoons. Those would not be seen on uh, a network like NBC, ABC, or CBS, or um, I don't know about Fox because we did not get a Fox station where I grew up in the 80s. Um, I had heard about this network called Fox, but just did not, we did not have a Fox affiliate where I lived at the time. So I don't know if they, if, I doubt they would have had G.I. Joe or Transformers as a Saturday morning cartoon, unless the affiliate purchased the uh, syndicated rights to air it on Saturday mornings. But as far as I'm, I, I'm aware, technically I do not think G.I. Joe, Transformers, etc. are considered a true Saturday morning cartoon. They were a weekday afternoon cartoon. From my understanding.
but I am looking forward to the new Masters of the Universe cartoon. Will I draw Alloy from Hero Horizon Zero Dawn? I am not familiar with Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, I like the title, but um, but no, I I am not familiar enough with that property. I do not know anything about that, so there would not be any plans to draw that at this time. But don't know what the future holds. Oh, but I was saying I am looking forward to the new Netflix Masters of the Universe cartoon. In fact, so much so that it's like, ah, I gotta make sure I finish off my um, Transformers Earthrise episodes so I'm all caught up on that before, before, um, before Masters of the Universe starts up. Oh, the Horizon Zero Dawn is a PS4 game. Okay. Yeah, I don't have a PS4. Um, so that's probably a game I would not have an opportunity to play anytime in the near future. So, um, while I do enjoy video games, I enjoy the idea of video games, I am not really a, a gamer. Um, uh, just don't really play a lot of video games. Um, just don't, just, uh, just don't have the time for it. But I do, I do enjoy video games in those rare instances I get to play, like, like Mario Kart or something like that when we're at a friend's house. You know, we'll play some Mario Kart. But that's about, that's about it. <laughs> You will convert me to gaming. I don't know if you're going to be able to do that. I don't know. I'd like to, you know, learn about your your uh, your plan, uh, what it would take. But um, I just I just don't know. I, don't, I I I would be very surprised if you were able to pull that off. Who do I play as Mar um, as in Mario Kart? I play as myself. I I I, I play my me. See, I think we'll see the bottom of his hand here on the old clamp handle. Just see the kind of maybe that bottom finger. How do I deal with art block? Great question. Um, I will answer that it to a degree here. But if you want a more detailed, more in-depth, more coherent answer, check out my Frequently Asked Questions playlist. And that is one of the, I think that's the number two question. Of course, there are only two that I've addressed so far. I need to do more. In fact, I was thinking about it this morning about my next Frequently Asked Question question that I would want to respond to uh, or make a video of. So, uh, but yes, I have a Frequently Asked Questions playlist and I go into to some depth with that one. Uh, for me, you know what? Because that's such a heady question and requires so much brain power to actually give a good response, uh, I don't think I could really <laughs> answer that one appropriately while trying to draw because it would require the attention to the, the words I would want to say. Uh, so I'm gonna just uh, let you look up that video. Um, I. I I think it's a fantastic question. It's why I made the video, because I get that question so frequently, I felt it was necessary to uh, create a specific video that addresses that one question. So, um, so after the live stream, please check out my Frequently Asked Questions uh, playlist and check out that video there, and you're gonna get a much better answer than I could give you here while trying to draw. Is this Clamp Champ? Yes, it is.
just doing the line art here today. Does this mean I'm excited about Revelations? Yes, it does. It means exactly that. Let's see, when did I start making comics and who is my favorite artist hero of all time? Uh, let's see, I, I try to figure out how to answer this question uh, as accurately as possible. So, I started making my homemade mini comics, my fan made mini comics as a, as a kid, as a 14 year old, a freshman in high school. This is when I started making comics. And when I made those homemade mini comics for fun, I realized how fun it was and um, then decided this is what I want to do for my career. So I started to teach myself how to be a comic book artist as a kid growing up in the 80s. And um, I broke into the business at age 22 I, almost 23, like I broke into the business full time at about age 22, but I moved to, 20, to, to California when I was 23 years old to work for Rob Liefeld, the creator of Deadpool, to work for his Image Comics Studios, Extreme Studios. So I just turned 23 when I, when I moved out here, but he discovered me when I was 22. So I've been making comic books for most of my life, whether it be for fun, or as my career. Probably been making comics as my career for half my life. Over half my life. And loving it. Oh, and my all-time artist hero, uh, easy question, Arthur Adams. Or easy answer, I should say. Easy answer to that question. It's probably a better way of saying that sentence. Arthur Adams, big fan. Discovered him his art when I was 15 years old. Uh, Web of Spider-Man Annual Number Two. Uh, found it, found it, came across that comic at like a convenience store while on a trip to Disney World, and uh, purchased it and just immediately fell in love with his his art, his work. Um, became a super fan, and he definitely was a huge influence on my uh, on my my comic book style along with so many other artists of the 1980s and into the 1990s but Arthur Adams is like probably my number one
Yes. Um, I've gotten to know him and his wife, the amazing artist Joyce Chin, over the years. Um, he's been very cool to me. I was able to actually personally thank him for being such an influence for me. Um, and he, he, he was very gracious in, in receiving that. That uh, well, I hope he took it as a compliment. <laughs> But um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a good experience, I, at least on my end, uh, getting to let him know uh, how much he had, has been an inspiration, how his work has been an inspiration. Uh, I think to a lot of artists, especially for those of us that grew up, you know, discovered his work in the 80s and how he's been just killing it ever since then. Let's see, that's an interesting question there. Let me pull that back up, come back. Where'd you go? Uh, when you made mistakes on your art work, did you, did you go with it or did you start all over? If it's unreversible, like in the inking stage. Yeah, you know, it all depends. It all depends on what is the mistake. Sometimes you can just go with it. Sometimes you can uh, work around the mistake and if you don't tell anyone, no one will know it's a mistake. Like I see 17 mistakes in this illustration right here, but if I don't tell y'all about it, you won't maybe uh, know what it is. And actually that's a joke there. I'm, um, this is actually flawless. Um, and that's a joke as well. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, uh, yeah, mistakes happen, absolutely. And it all depends on what is that mistake? What is that mistake? And sometimes I, it, if I make a mistake, uh, depending on what the mistake is or, or, you know, how I feel about it. It's like sometimes I have to step away from the art uh, and come back at it with a fresh eye and see, can I salvage this piece? Is there hope for this piece or am I going to have to start over? Um, there have been times like that and it sucks. Um, but the thing is, with comics, if I make a mistake, uh, in fact, it, it, it happens frequently, you know, I get a smudge of ink somewhere that I don't want, I just grab the white paint and I just paint over it. It's like, who cares? This is going to get scanned in and uploaded to the colorist who's going to color a digital file. So it doesn't matter if I've got white correction fluid on, on the piece or not. Um, it, it's, I mean, you look at Jack Kirby comic book original art, and it's got all sorts of, you know, ink and paint and notes written all over it and stuff. It's just like, but it's what the final product needs to be is just the clean camera ready or now, you know, high res computer file artwork. So, um, so in that regard, I don't let mistakes worry me too much. It's rare that I have to start completely over uh, for a mistake of my comic book art because, hey, as long as I can white out the mistake and just keep drawing over it, fine. If it's a commission, however, you don't want to have a lot of, you know, white out or white paint or something showing that, oh, there was a mistake there and it had to be covered over. You want a nice, crisp, clean piece of finished art for the client. So that I try to be, you know, I'm going to be far more intentional and careful because it's, you know, it's, it's not a piece that's being created for production. It's a piece created for someone's collection. Um, so that, that's a different sort of mindset for me. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's kind of a wibbly wobbly response to your question there, but I'm no stranger to wibbly wobbly responses as you longtime viewers of my art videos and live streams are aware. I'm going to put in sort of a silvery texture here. I know a lot of people ask, how do you draw reflective textures in your art? And I've tried to show this like in illustrations of Iron Man and such. So this, uh, 
this uh, armored chest piece sort of thing here is going to have um, best Jim Carrey movie, Dumb and Dumber. Um, it's going to have a uh, have a. I want to give it a kind of a, some uh, shiny reflective texture to it, and uh, and to do that, I'm going to think of the kind of the muscle shapes, uh, and and then I'm going to create these um, thick and thin lines to create uh, essentially what is a reflection of the horizon around him, the environment around him. So, um, so it starts thick and then kind of fades to thinner and the thick is kind of the horizon line, but it all kind of angles depending on the curvature of his body taking a little artistic liberty here and there, but it's starting to create that kind of reflective nature. Uh, you kind of saw I was kind of doing that here in the belt as well, because it's a little darker here, deeper up underneath uh, where his clamp is. So uh, so this is just allowing me a little more detail into the, uh, the costuming here. Like through the shoulder muscles here. Get that... Uh, get that texture kind of rendering around. So a lot of it is considering the, the flow of the musculature. And then for like these studs that are all over his body, I'm gonna create little little reflective bits towards the bottom. Thick to thin, or thin to thick lines, I should say, in this regard. I've done this a lot of times. I've, I've put this type of reflection in, you know, circular stud type shapes for more years than I can count. So I'm pretty practiced at it. So, so I can just kind of like see it in my mind's eye and then just kind of go for it. And that's what practicing and just the repetition can do for us as artists. That's why you just keep at it again and again and again and again. Any art that you see someone create that does this professionally, it's because we do it over and over and over and over and over again. How do you think an Arthur Adams YouTube channel would have been in the back in the 80s? Uh, dude, if we had the internet back in the 80s and I had that as a resource as a kid, learning, I would probably be a completely different artist than I am today because I would have so much, a greater wealth of information um, for me to pull from because the best I had were magazine articles. That was it. There was no social media. There was no, uh, I didn't start going to comic book conventions till I was 18 and my buddy and I would go to Dallas to, uh, this was back when I wasn't living in Dallas, would go to Dallas to the, the comic book conventions. And that's where I st first started meeting artists and stuff. But if I could have done that starting even younger, or at least had, had the internet where I could watch videos of, of artists draw, oh my gosh, I would have learned so much as a, as a kid. Who knows what that would have shaped me into the artist I could, could have been today but that would be an impossibility. So I'm very thankful for the artist that I do get to be today and the fun that I do get to have. Putting in some heavy blacks here and what would be the blue part of his costume just to give him more, more mass or really help showcase that mass. I'm a wonderful resource for y'all, thank you. Well, thank you, I appreciate your support. It's symbiotic. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. And my art turned out great. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that as well. Gonna put some, uh, some fade here.
Now with a fade, you want to consider the shape of the section you're working with and, and row with that flow. Because uh, you want to help, the, the fade is to help show the mass of that section that you're rendering. I don't put the lines just down any old direction. I think, okay, I want this to show a curvature of the clavicle bone right there. So it's going to curve around. What is, how, what is that cylindrical shape going to be? So these are the things to think of when, when you're wanting to do your cross hatching or rendering of this sort. Consider the direction of the, the, the chunk, the body chunk, for lack of a better word. That you want to uh, render. So I'm going to, fill, going to put little X's here. That, that tells me as an anchor to go in and fill with black. So for this ab, I'm going to pull down this way. And we're going to fade even deeper behind us there. So see, it's like, it's not just going all willy-nilly. Because then it, 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 it doesn't give a sense of shape or form. It's just kind of a, mis, mish, a mishmash of, of lines. And it doesn't give a, 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 any strength or power. It's like that forearm there. I'm considering the curvature of that muscle. This tricep here. I'm going to add a few extra lines there. that bicep there. So always think about what is the, what is the section that you're inking? Where do you want, where's the light coming from? And then how do the lines curve around that, that, that muscle or that, you know, object that you're, you're inking? Wolverine's arm would have a lot more lines. <laughs> yes, because he's a hairy, hairy little man. Do y'all know how tall Wolverine's supposed to be? I know a lot of people know him from the movies and they, they think of Hugh Jackman when they think of Wolverine, so they think of Wolverine being six feet tall. But did you, did you know that's not how tall he is in the comic books? 5'2", very close, five foot three. He's five foot three. He is a short dude. And I love that about him, because like, it, I just, you know, seeing him as, 5'3", and you got Cyclops, who's like at least 6'1", maybe 6'2", and then, you know, uh, Storm, she's, she's, you know, she's, most of the women are actually taller than Wolverine. Kitty Pride is technically, I think, an inch or two taller than Wolverine. Rogue is taller than Wolverine. You know, you got Colossus pushing, what, six something, seven feet tall. So, uh, especially when he's armored up, I think he somehow gets a little taller. Depends on how he's drawn. But uh, just having those size variations of the X-Men, I just loved that he was short. Spidey is 5'9". I think he might be 5'10", but who's going to quibble over an, an inch? I think, But I think he's 5'10". And, you know, that's one of the things I'll try to look up oftentimes is, is how tall are certain characters. Um... So that when I draw them, I can have them at the appropriate height relation to the other characters. So if I'm drawing Spider-Man and Captain America, I'm gonna, I, you know, I, I double check that sometimes. It's like, okay, Peter Parker is five foot ten, Steve Rogers is six. I, I want to say six one, maybe six two. And what's nice is that you know a lot of this information is from the Marvel handbooks or the DC uh, who's who guides, who's who in the DC universe guides. So. Um, uh, I have those books from like the 1980s, as well as, you know, a lot of it is online. So if I can't remember a, a character's height or eye color, um, I can do a quick Google search and usually I can find that information a lot quicker than it would be for, um, than it would be if I were pulling out my, uh, my old handbooks. So now we're going to tackle this arm here. It's been fun hanging out with y'all. Been fun uh, getting 
getting to draw and hang, so I hope y'all are having a good time. Appreciate y'all hanging here with me. This will probably be a bit of a longer live stream, apparently, but uh, but that, that that can't be too bad. I noticed that my longer art live streams tend to, to get sometimes get more views than the shorter live streams, so I do appreciate y'all watching, whether you're watching live or you're watching this later. Many uh, colors give Peter Parker blue eyes, but his eyes are brown. That is correct. When I was researching um, like 1970s Spider-Man comics for Gwen Stacy reference for when I was drawing the Gwen Stacy series, I noticed that oftentimes, especially in the 70s, they gave Peter Parker, they gave everybody blue eyes. It was just kind of like this default. And um, I don't know if that was because of the way comics were colored back then. Because if you don't know how comics were colored back in the, like the early days of print up through the 1980s, because computer coloring didn't really start till the 1990s when Image Comics and Rob Liefeld's Extreme Studios started. He was like one of the first people to kind of, his studio to pioneer um, computer coloring, from what I understand. Not the only one, but one of the first ones. I know when I came in that, you know, all the extreme books were colored uh, digitally. But uh, the original printing uh, was, uh, they would t you'd take the line art here and then um, a colorist would create a marker guide and would have all these different color codes pointing to each color. And then these people, this, these production team people, would cut layers of film that represented each color. So when the camera, they, they took cam uh, photos, because that's how you know print work was done, was taking photos of the artwork um, to send to the printer. Uh, they would take a photo of each film layer. So all the, the browns, the silvers, or light blues or grays to make silver, the blue, the red, that would each be a separate photo based on a separate piece of film cut. So uh, sometimes things because of, I don't know if it was deadlines or uh, you know how soon they had to get these you know things colored and essentially all this film cut, um, and there'd be these overlays of film. You just lift them over it, over it again, over it again, over again. Um, that would be, you know, maybe it was easy because you you do all the blues on one layer of film for every panel. Just the entire thing would be all blues. So maybe it was just easier for them just to. You know, it's like, ah, uh, get it done fast. You know, maybe it wasn't so much someone making a mistake as someone was just making it easy. I don't know. This is just me speculating of what could have happened in the 1970s that would all of a sudden give Peter Parker blue eyes. But, but yeah, old printing processes was film cutting. Uh, was, one fr was Ron Friends one of my influences? I do enjoy and admire Ron Fl Friends' artwork. I did not encounter a lot of it as a kid in the 80s, so I do not count him as one of my influences, uh, but I do have great respect for his art and, and the great enjoyment, and, uh, and I do find it inspirational for sure, but he's not one of my influences now. Definitely not to the, the degree that Arthur Adams or Walter Simonson or Alan Davis or um, uh, Rick Leonardi would be considered my strongest influences. Let's see, I gotta double check his uh, his gauntlet here. Kind of the, uh, the iPad fell asleep. Oh, oh yeah, let's see, he's got those studs running all down the sides. Um, so we're gonna be drawing more circles, gang. I hope you like circles, cause we're not letting up. You hear Dave Cockrum was one of your guys that influenced you. Uh, again, great respect for his work. Did not encounter a lot of his comics at that time, with the comics I was reading at the time. So I don't consider him as one of my influences, but I do find his work to be masterful and inspirational, yes. But influence, no, I don't, I don't uh, count him as one of my influences necessarily. But I do find his work inspirational, if that makes sense. It's just the the the, the comics I was reading uh, and my favorite comics were drawn by Arthur Adams, Rick Leonardi, Walter Simonson, Alan Davis, for sure. Others, 
uh, Mark Silvestri's Uncanny X-Men, Brett Blevins on uh, New Mutants, uh, later Rob Liefeld on New Mutants, Jim Lee, uh, Todd McFarlane, uh, Eric Larson, you know, both of them being on uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Um, those would be some of my earliest influences. And then uh, I'd probably say some of the the, the influences that kind of came in later, as you know, just before I broke into the business, uh, Marco Ringo, Umberto Ramos, and uh, J. Scott Campbell, to a degree. Not as to great of a uh, as great of a degree as like Arthur Adams or Rick Leonardi. They th those first four I consider my foundational four, um, and then it kind of spiderwebs out from there to um, to different degrees. But uh, the greatest are those first four I mentioned. My foundational four again that would be Arthur Adams, Rick Leonardi, Walter Simonson, and Alan Davis. Three of those people I've gotten to say thank you for being such a huge influence on my work. And I'm still waiting to, to get a chance to share that with the fourth one. But there are a lot of artists that I find inspirational that not, aren't necessarily influences. If that makes sense. The influences are the ones that made me go, you know, I want to draw just like him. And a lot of that happens in my youth. And then as I get older, and, or I got older, and I got more confident with my own skills and started to kind of branch out in my own directions, it wasn't so much influence as much as inspiration. So by the early, mid-90s, I was being more inspired by artists and less influenced because I'd already been influenced by my 80s to early 90s artists, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. John Byrne would probably fall into the category of influence. I was reading his, uh, let's see, when I started reading comics, he was uh, drawing uh, Fantastic Four, so I missed his X-Men run. So I did get to experience some of it in, as well as Dave Cockrum stuff in the reprint classic X-Men comic book. Oh, John Bogdanov, I forgot to mention him, on Power Pack. Oh my gosh, loved his work on that. I think Joe Quesada might have been one of my last, one of the last artists that really kind of started to influence me but it was to a small degree because kind of one of those last influences that became an inspiration because of the direction of where I was heading with my art. I could think I could say that for J. Scott Campbell's work and a bit of uh, Umberto Ramos's. I'd probably say Marco Ringo was my last major influence before I started to head in my own directions. Because influences, I think, are kind of like our training wheels, the people we kind of learn from. Because that's the nice thing about comics is you can kind of learn by looking at your favorites. At least that's what I had to do. <laughs> because there was no other, like I said earlier in the, the live stream, there weren't as many, you know, I didn't have the internet, didn't have videos like this to watch. Um, or social media to interact with my favorite artists, or really even make it to comic book conventions to even, I mean, they were just kind of a different animal than what they are today. Um, you know, they were ballroom, or yeah, ball, uh, hotel ballroom conventions, not mega, mega events like San Diego and New York. be a ballroom of like five artists like one big name artist or two big name artists and then maybe some local artists who do some you know cool indie books or whatnot so so you know learning by just looking is I think what influences are to me. 
and now I'm inspired by looking. So you know, I'll, I'll open up my Instagram in the morning and just see what all my friends, especially my East Coast or international friends have posted. And it's like, oh, that's awesome. Now, now I, I, I want to go and create something. The Todd Knock way. Because people can see the, the Arthur Adams influence. They can see the Rick Leonardi influence to a degree. Maybe they can't quite, maybe the, the but the, the Alan Davis influence may not, might not be as, as prevalent as it, as it could have been. That's because, you know, I think I just started going in my own directions. So, uh, so I know that, in, that, that, that Alan Davis influence is, is there deep down, even though it might not be as, as noticeable uh, in what you see me doing here today, you might not go, oh yeah, I see the, the, that there's a Alan Davis there. It just, but I don't know. I guess that's a bit of a wibbly wobbly concept I'm throwing out there, but the more, the more I learn, and especially the more I teach myself, the more I study, the, the more I evolve. And so it's not just influenced by my favorite comic book artists so much as it was when I was when I was younger, and that was my my biggest teacher was looking at at my favorite artists and trying to mimic what they were doing to try to learn how to do this. Hopefully that made sense. <laughs> if not, I'm sure I'll try to talk about it again someday in another live stream. Maybe find a better way of saying it. Has any industry person told you that you inspired them yet? Uh, yes, that has been starting to happen. There have been a couple of artists that have that have said have been an influence to a younger them. Uh, so that that kind of makes me feel like, whoa, dang, generations. Because I've been doing this for quite a while. I mean, like I said, more than half my life. So it's going to get to a point where there's going to be a new crop of young artists and they are going to be ones who grew up reading my Young Justice comics. Or, um, oop, knocked over my, my straight edge there. Um, you know, a lot of them read my Young Justice comics. So that's what they were influenced by. Can I do a stream where I drink an entire bottle of hot sauce? I do love hot sauce. I'm a big fan of McElhenney's Tabasco. Uh, would I do a live stream of me drinking a whole bottle? I'll think about that. Um, it might have to be some sort of reward challenge. So I have to figure out um, figure out what, what, what would have to happen for me to uh, be willing to do a live stream where I drink a full bottle of... of um, Hot sauce. Now, would people want to see that? I know someone uh, suggested that, but is that a type of video y'all would want to see? The rest of you, I think. Who was it? Um, was it Nintendo dude or Nintendo dude suggested it? But would other people want to see that? Nah. Da eighty eight says nah. Oops, sorry, gang. Gringo Bandito is a good hot sauce. I haven't heard of that one. Absolutely not. Only on wings. Okay, so if this was like that hot wings show. Nintendo, I think this is going to get shut down. If, if people aren't, aren't into it, then, uh, then I, I, you know, I don't know if it's worthwhile for me to do if it's something people don't want to see. Yes, you say yes. I would think you would say yes, Nintendo, uh, especially since you proposed it. Um, so I, I would expect you to say yes. Oh, well, thank you for the those that have said I, I, I'm, I'm an influence to them. I, I, I am honored. I hope I hope you are learning good stuff, learning from what I do, and I, I wish you all the best as you start to branch out into your own style and and uh, and um, approach to your work. One day I will not be your training wheels anymore, and and you'll be moving off into new directions, creating. Cool masterpieces. 
Inca drawing only using hot sauce. I would have to experiment to see if that's possible and if how that would look and if it looks good, then that might be how we handle the hot sauce challenge. Very interesting. So I'd probably have to use a crow quill nib dip pen or um, a brush. I don't know if I want to jack up a brush using a you know, dipping it in hot sauce. Brushes can be expensive, especially the good brushes. Um, coloring with hot sauce, yeah, it, it'd have to be like a red wash, like a, like a like a pen and ink wash. It'd be a or a brush and ink wash. It'd be like a hot hot sauce wash. I'm very intrigued by this idea. Tell you what, if this Champ Clamp video can get to 10,000 views by, I will, I, you know what, we'll just say this. I will do an, a, a hot sauce wash illustration, sight unseen. I don't even know if it will work, but we'll try. We will either be marveled that it can be done or laugh at how terrible it is. But cl this Clamp Champ video has to reach 10,000 views by... Uh, the 4th of July. We'll say by 10 a.m. Pacific time on the 4th of July. H how's that? And maybe I might even take a sip of the hot sauce while I work. No guarantee on that. So, so there we go. The gauntlet has been not really thrown down, but has been presented. Let's say presented. So... Heck, maybe I'll, I'll uh, do a, a hot sauce wash for, um, for Clamp Champ. Though it would, probably would have been better if this was clawful, because at least clawful's all red. Might have to do a new illustration. We'll see. We'll see. First, got to wait to see if this video can even get to, pardon me, 10,000 views. So if you're watching this right now, afterwards, after the live stream, um, you you have gotten this one view closer to uh, the hot sauce inking challenge. Okay, so not much more. Just got to do his uh, his britches. Everyone in the Masters of the Universe wears fuzzy uh, shorts. Might have to break out a, a brush pen to create that, that fuzzy, furry texture. Coffee wash? Now, I have heard of co coffee washes being done at conventions. I, I have seen those. They look awesome. They're actually really quite cool. Uh, I can't remember which artist it was. I don't even want to hazard a guess as to from my memory. Uh, but uh, they, I can't remember how it happened, um, but they, they ended up using coffee to uh, create a sort of wash texture for the illustration they were doing, and it was a hit. It turned out really cool. So I know coffee can be, there ha that has been done before. Peanut butter wash? <laughs> I don't think peanut butter washes as much as it clumps. <laughs> I guess you could water it down. I, I, that'd be an interesting uh, thing. Maybe I should turn my channel into a a food into an art cooking show where we don't cook, but uh, I utilize different food stuffs for um, to to draw with. See, what was that last question there? Do I have a technique on how to hide mistakes on your inks? Um, this was kind of a subject that was br uh, brought up earlier in the live stream. Um, it all really depends on what is the mistake. Some mistakes you can, I mean, and, and it depends on what the mistake is, depends on, 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 what, the, uh, on what I would do to fix it. So uh, it's not like a one and done sort of patent, uh, pat uh, 
fix it scenario. It's it all depends on how bad is the mistake, where is the mistake? Because sometimes it can be, oh, I made a mistake. Well, I'll just fill that in black. That's probably the easiest. That filling it all in black hides the mistake completely for the most part. You know, so it all really depends on um, on on what that mistake is and where that mistake is. What am I using here? I'm using, uh, I forgot to mention it, thank you for asking. I'm using the Zebra Brush Pen, the Medium Nib. So this is a He-Man character? Yes, this is Clamp Champ. He's kind of one of the, the, he was from later in the line. I can't remember which year he came out. Um, but, uh, I think I saw him in the new um, Masters of the Universe Revelations uh, trailer. So I think we'll be seeing this character in the new He-Man cartoon coming to Netflix next month. Which is kind of part of what inspired me to want to draw Clamp Champ because he's just so obscure. Well, he, he has been so obscure. You know, he's, you know, he's not as, you know, widely known as like a uh, man at arms or a uh, uh, Zodak or a Stratos. You know, but a cool guy nonetheless, in my opinion. He was one of the last two to be released in 1986. Thank you very much, Crash. Um, I figured he was probably one of the last ones, but I didn't realize it was 86. Oh, for example, what if a specific area was too heavy and had too much weight on one side than it should? Ew, you know? Um, depends on what the background is. Can you black, like say this this side, I, I put too big of a, too thick of a line here on the, on the, on the shoulder. Then, you know, can I just, can I just black out this whole, can I put a big shadow here? Can I create a whole... Like he's got this cast shadow, and I can just fill all this in black. Then it would, and just bring that black all the way to the line there. And then there is no li more line weight anymore. It's just a big heavy black shadow. Uh, that could possibly be one way to fix it. But if I can't put a shadow there, then what do I do? You know, it all just depends on what is the entirety of the composition. And not every mistake is uh, fixable. It, not every mistake can be salvaged. Uh, sometimes, sometimes there is the the dreaded "gotta scrap it and start over." And then there's the sometimes it's the don't really worry about it, don't draw attention to it. Uh, sometimes it's like, okay, I made this line too thick. All right, I'll just beef up the other lines to match, and then they just go through, and everything just gets beefed up a bit more. Uh, is another way to fix it. Sometimes it's just leave it as is and and hope no one says anything about it. So uh, and sometimes, from my experience, they won't. They don't even perceive it as as a mistake. So that's why I've learned don't necessarily have to point out your mistakes in every illustration to every person because. Even though I see it as a mistake, the person might not see it, the viewer might not see it as a mistake. Yeah, I can see it because it came from inside of me and I knew what my intention was and I didn't achieve what I thought my expectation was, but it doesn't necessarily mean that um, everyone's going to uh, perceive it that way because they're, they're not, they don't know what every intention was. It's like a beauty mark, it only enhances the final results. Yes, it is the, the Cindy Crawford of art. So good to see you here, Tony.
All right, so not much more here to go. If I can let me pull this back a little bit so you can see more of what we got going on here in the entirety, since I've been so pushed in for the inks. Don't like how this new rig is. So not quite pulled all the way out or as far back as I could, could be, but um, don't want to jostle the camera too much right now. Still have to fill in these blacks here in a moment, but I want to erase first. Um, I'm one, trying to figure out, should I throw in a little background something or other? Like, do I want to draw some, some rocks? Or do I just leave it, leave them as is? Or do I put in like a, like a graphic shape? Well, I do a daily makeup tutorial. Um, if I do, it would only be using hot sauce. Right, for now, before I, while well, I think about, do I throw in some sort of background element? How about we just take the old kneaded art gum eraser and start to erase the graphite lines here. Maybe that'll help me decide what to do. Because if we take this to color, if this goes to a, a hot sauce wash, I might want to have that background open for some sort of color effect or hot sauce effect. Now, if you're, on, if you're just tuned in and wondering, why am I talking about a hot sauce effect? Our discussion here this, this afternoon has brought up the idea of utilizing hot sauce. Now, I'm just using a block eraser here to get some of those heavier graphite lines to, to come off the page is if this um, if this uh, if this video here this one specific video can reach 10,000 views 10,000 views by 10 a.m. Pacific time on the 4th of July on July 4th then I will do a an art video art video where I I um, ink with hot sauce Originally it was proposed I would drink a bottle of hot sauce, but it didn't seem like most people were into watching me drink a bottle of hot sauce. I'm not sure if I'd want to drink a whole bottle of hot sauce, though I do love hot sauce. Um, so someone proposed, what have I inked with hot sauce? So it's like, there we go, best of both worlds. And, uh, but in order for that to happen, this video has to hit 10,000 views in the next two plus weeks. So, um, so there's time. I mean, it could happen. Feel free to share this video with your friends, families, and fellow Masters of the Universe friends. And uh, who knows? Maybe we will get uh, an art video with hot sauce. And that's views, not likes. We need we need ten thousand views. So I'm putting some more dark areas here into the clamp. just to give it some more um, more weight. I'll be posting a shot of this on my social media, so make sure you're following me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'll have links to that in my video description below. And those links are in all my video descriptions. So no matter what video of mine you're watching, you can always find links to my social media where I try to post art as regularly as I can. 
Um, it's been a little bit more difficult lately because of how I've been so busy with, with my comic book work. So I'm not able to post sketches like this or pieces of art like this as much because of how busy I've been and will continue to be for the rest of this year, maybe into early next year. But hopefully, hopefully we hit that 10,000 10, views for this video and we'll definitely have, I will make the time to come and do that, uh, do that uh, hot sauce video. For better or worse, why do I have the strong sensation that it's going to be for the worst? <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be nuts. But we don't even know if that that's going to come to pass. Your question is, how did he get the claw? What happened to his real hand? Did he lose it? No, his real hand's right there. It's a, it's a it's like a claw gun. It's like this big it's this big clamp device that he carries and 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 can clamp from a distance. Uh, not that great of a distance, I guess. It's more or less an arm's length plus this giant thingy. But uh, but yeah, this is a device he holds. Um, he did his hand did not get replaced with a clamp, though. With the, uh, you know, Masters of the Universe, it's not unheard of for characters to have, you know, um, replaceable parts. But yeah, it was, it was a clamp big enough that he could grapple uh, other other characters. Like, he could, he could fit an action figure inside, like he could grab him by the waist. Every toy had a gimmick. Yep, that is correct. Every toy had a, some sort of gimmick, though not the, some of the first ones didn't as much. Like Man at Arms, he did. He, they were more just kind of like this is their character. Um, Zodak, Stratos, you know, there was no gimmick. Then they started coming up with the gimmicks like Web Store and his spiderweb backpack and uh, Snout Spout and Stinkor and uh, Clawful. Then they started getting a lot more gimmicky. Extensor, Mecha Neck. Um, which I thought was great. Your gimmick is you can stretch your neck. That's that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, some of the first ones they 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 didn't have really as strong of a gimmick like uh, clamp chat uh, clamp champ or Rio blast, you know. So uh, it's probably just the evolution of the toy line. All right, let's uh, get my where is my do 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 do. -do. Uh, yes, my Pentel pocket brush pen. I can fill in these spotted blacks here on his chest. And down over here, that one little ab. And then this side of his clamp device. There we go. Put my autograph on there. Then we can pull back here and just have to hold the camera up so we can get a better kind of full, full shot. 
Uh, this will go up on my social media here. Like I said, if not tonight, then uh, tomorrow is what I'll shoot for. Um, so make sure you're following me on my social media so you can see this a shot of this finished piece. So uh, let's wrap up today's show. We've gone for quite, a, quite some time here. Woo woo. Okay, the clamp doesn't want to... Having my own... I am not the clamp champ, apparently, because that clamp does not want to uh, <laughs> let go. Let's flip the camera around. Where's the... There we go. There we are. Hey, gang. Yeah, so as you, for those of you that didn't get a chance to see earlier, when I started the live stream, I did get a haircut. So this happened in um, uh, early, early uh, June. After I was fully vaccinated, I went and got a, got a haircut. So... Um, Gang, thanks so much for hanging out with me. And as you can see here, my friends Tom Servo and Crow from Mystery Science Theater uh, share office space with me. Uh, Clam Champ will be up on my social media. And uh, like I said, if this video gets to, gets to 10,000 views uh, by 10 a.m. Pacific time on the 4th of July, I will do an illustration where I ink with hot sauce. For better or for worse, more than likely I fear it's going to be for the worse. But we will try. And we will hopefully... if if not, see something awesome happen, we'll see something funny happen and uh, get a good laugh out of it. So, gang, thanks for hanging out with me. It's so good to get to spend a Saturday afternoon with y'all. Hopefully, I'll get to see you again here sooner than later. Um, but, you know, like I said, my work schedule's work keeping me crazy busy. It's not letting up here for the rest of 2021. Uh, I'm very excited about my next project. I can't wait for y'all to find out what it is and when it's announced. Um, but until then, make sure you pick up my X-Men Legends issue 5 and 6 coming out this July 21st and late August. It's a two-part story, the 1990s all-new, all-different X-Factor starring Havoc, Polaris, Wolvesbane, Multiple Man, Strong Guy, Quicksilver, the Peter David era X-Factor. I'm doing that story with writer Peter David. Um, so much fun, so great to work with Peter David again, and um, yeah, so look for that coming out here in July and August. X-Men Legends issues 5 and 6, and uh, and then also tons of covers. I'll be sharing all my, uh, what, what comics are coming out on my social media, but hopefully I'll be back here to tell you more stuff in future art live streams. Like I said, hopefully sooner than later we'll see what I can squeeze in uh, with the time I have um, as we move through the second half of 2021. Hopefully y'all are staying safe, staying well, and uh, enjoying life. Hopefully you're all um, doing well here as we are hopefully moving out of this COVID season and uh, into back to somewhat normal life or kind of what we remembered prior to all this COVID stuff. Uh, thank you for all your support. It's always good to hang out with you and uh, I will see you again, hopefully real soon. Till then, I'm Todd Knock. Keep on drawing, keep having fun. Take care.